well welcome to a hopefully an osprey episode I've got a lake we've got five osprey that i saw we've got to get down this sketchy slippy rocky bit there ducks turkey vulture all right so we're gonna wait for some osprey i'm gonna get set up it, the wind is picking up and it's going that way. So bird tip real quick right off the bat. If you're shooting waterfowl or raptors diving in the water or whatever, you want the wind to your back. So I'm anticipating them diving in and then coming out and hopefully not being behind me. <laughs> Cause I got a bunch of rump shots yesterday or the day before yesterday, which is cool, but not really cool for photography, you know? So I got a lot to talk about. Um, I got some things and I got a lot of things going on upstairs. Little hamsters are going crazy. And I'm like changing my whole perspective on wildlife photography and photography in general and my business and all of that stuff. So let's, uh, let's get set up and we'll talk about some things. All right, so let's just jump right into it, shall we? So I bought, this guy <laughs> let me tell you getting it to fit in this shimoda action x50 was not easy but it works so i've got a lot to do <laughs> i've got a lot of accessories to acquire now but this is the 500 f4 mark ii and i kind of i want to talk about like why i bought it and how I bought it because I think that's kind of important to like where my mind was at because it wasn't easy for me and I had to go through a lot of uh, so let's just like let's just sit down let me see if I see that cormorant again and uh give camera lady a break real quick and then we'll we'll have a little story time for what's going on <laughs> I think YouTube has a little bit to do with it. You know, um, if you guys are, are new to the channel, welcome. I do, wild, I do a lot of stuff and I think that's part of the problem. One of those things is wildlife. I do a lot of wildlife. I love it. It's one of my personal favorite types of photography to do. It's also uh, one of the types of photography that does kind of the best on my channel. Uh, but a lot of that stuff, uh, traditionally, so I've had the, the 100 to 500 and the 800 F11 and various lenses, you know, before that or whatever, but that's what I've been using for the past couple of years. And I've rented a lot of lenses and I've, I've uh, used a lot of lenses. I've borrowed lenses, all kinds of things. And I've done a lot of videos on, you know, budget gear and gear that I have and, you know, all of the, this versus that comparisons, reviews. This is one of the things that's prompted me to, shift is I want to start taking wildlife more seriously for myself and I think having something like this is what's definitely challenging me you know getting I've had this for about a week now and I've been using it every single day and getting learning how to use it is is definitely uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's a learning curve but another thing is um, I, I am a professional photographer by definition. Uh, I mean, I'm not rich or anything like that. I have a family to support. And luckily with the business that Camera Lady and I run together, um, we don't really talk about it much on the channel. It, it is photography. Um, we do a lot of different stuff, but mostly like events and commercial work and, and action sports and stuff like that. Um, but lately we've been cutting back on that a lot and we've been focusing more on the YouTube. So all of my, my money does come from photography uh, and some of that is wildlife, but I am by no means a professional wildlife photographer. And I kind of am realizing that I kind of want to be, <laughs> I, I want to do more. I do, I do offer workshops and I sell stock footage and stuff like that. Um, but I've never really done like prints or I've never really taken my wildlife to the next step. And you, you don't need a big lens like this to help you do that. You know, I finally also feel like I'm at the spot. I've been doing wildlife photography for over 20 years. Like I'm not 
tooting my own horn or being arrogant or anything, but I am understanding that I do have the skills to do it uh, at the level that I want to do it. And I've been working on those skills for the last 20 years. And I feel like I'm, I'm a very lazy person. <laughs> I've been very lazy over the past uh, 10 years or so. I've gotten progressively more lazy. And a lot of that has to do with my body. Uh, if you don't know, I was in the military and I got hurt a lot and I got uh, medically discharged. So I've been dealing with a lot of physical pain, a lot of mental stuff over the past 15 years. And over the last, like what, three, four months now, uh, I've been really having a mental and physical change. Uh, I've changed the way I eat. I changed the way I think about food. I changed the way I think about exercise. I've finally been getting some help from the VA and some answers and all of it. I've lost like 25 pounds in like three months and that's gone a long way to making me feel better. Uh, both mentally and physically. I can hike longer now. I can I can actually potentially, uh, you know, have the physical strength to deal with a lens like this. So all of these things are kind of pushing me uh, towards, you know, I've, I've always wanted something like this and just thinking about like, how can I make that happen? All right, so we definitely got interrupted by Osprey and that was a good thing because I shot it in the face twice. Well, there was two of them. I got one diving the juvenile trying, learning how to fish. And then I got another one, caught the fish, got this whole sequence of shots. It was fantastic. I wish I was a little farther down the lake shore, but it's okay. So anyways, let's talk about, uh, I think I was talking something about being lazy. So for one thing, I feel better now. I feel a lot better. Uh, there's still a lot of problems with my body, with things that are broken and things that need to be fixed and potential surgeries. Um, but losing the weight has helped a lot and my shoulder is getting better and all of this stuff It's prompting me to want to not be so lazy That he's diving right now in front of me There he goes. Oh my goodness. Oh He can't that's wow huh. Yeah, I'm film I'm filming him fly off with it right now He's trying, he's struggling. Oh, he's struggling. Okay, and it went behind the tree. Wow. I'm just talking away and I hear that splash right in front of me, he just dove. So I got the shot and then I got the sequence of shots. I didn't get him diving, of course, because I was too busy talking. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> but that was cool, big fishy. He's right here in front of me. It's right here in front of me. Here he goes. Here he goes. Having the F4 and having the sharpness of this thing has just been mind blowing. I can already tell you that I, I am no longer worried or as worried, it's not on my mind as nearly as much about going out in crappy weather because crappy weather is often really great wildlife time, you know, and it, right now it's completely overcast. And if I would have my 800 F11, I wouldn't even use it. I'd be using my 500 on the one to 500, it's sprinkling, it's starting to rain. The point is having the best I can possibly get with you know the F4 and the image sharpness and everything that this brings to the table. The images that I've been able to get over this last week, I've been very happy with, even though they've just been kind of test images and all of that stuff. Here he comes, here he comes. He's right in front of me. That was gnarly. So I got the teleconverter on this 700 F5.6. So last thing uh, about the, you know, like running the workshops and stuff, like I also want to share this. And I also, I always, if you've ever been on a workshop with me, then you'll know. And if you haven't, then, you know, think about it. Um, 
I love sharing my gear with other people, with, with people in the workshop, because a lot of times it's gear that either they don't have or they want to try, or here he comes, he's diving right, he's going, man. All right, focus. Uh, um, but the point is like, I want to take people out and if they've never had a chance to use a big prime like this, not only do they get to use one, uh, but they get to use one under tutelage, under guidance, but under instruction. And I'll be there to help them get the most out of it in a situation where you know it's going to benefit them. But this is just one cool aspect of that is that now I can say, hey, do you want to try out a big prime when we're at Bosque and there's cranes taking off and it's blue hour and you know maybe they have a zoom or something and it's just not, it's going to be really cool. And I'm excited for that aspect of it too. So let's talk about price and how I got this because it's kind of interesting. Um, and that was a, another big aspect in like me tearing myself apart mentally is that these things are expensive. So going new, this thing is $9,000. Obviously I did not buy a new one. Uh, on eBay, they're running between 5,300 and 6,000-ish. I actually got this one on MPB for $4,000 and it wasn't, they had a couple of other ones that were 5,000. So this was actually like the worst condition one they had and it was still uh, listed as good condition. Uh, and by the looks of it, I have no qualms with any part of, you know, there's a scratch right here on the hood. The glass is great. The buttons are great. Everything is great. The seal's fine. I'm very happy with, you know, the fact that I got this thing for a thousand less than what it's going for on the used market is incredible. However, I still could not afford $4,000. I didn't have it. I didn't have a fraction of that. I didn't have any of that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still living paycheck to paycheck. I'm just trying to keep my 15 year old from eating the entire house. <laughs> so I actually had to sell a lot of stuff. And if you guys are on my Instagram or you saw the YouTube posts, you probably know I sold my R6, I sold my 100 to 500, I sold my 14 to 35, I sold a 35 prime, I sold my 800, all of that I sold to equal $4,000 just to get enough for this. So I actually didn't end up paying a penny for this, except that I just lost half my gear, including two of my most used lenses ever and my backup body, uh, which I did use a lot and which camera lady used a lot. And, and so, you know, I had to give her the R6 Mark II until I can get a new backup body. So the sacrifices that I made were that like it put us out, it put our business out for being able to do a lot of the stuff that we do uh, for getting this, you know, the one to 500, I still have said, and I still stand by this. It is the best lens of all time. If I could only have one lens ever for the rest of my photography career, for the rest of my life, it would be the one to 500. And I would, I would forego doing wide angles and I would just pan over the crap out of everything. But if I only had one lens, it would be that one. I love that lens so much. And I understand that I probably will never get that lens again because you know, that, that lens is almost $3,000. Like it's not that far away from the used thing of this. That was a huge sacrifice. I understand that it's way more versatile than this thing. This thing is very limiting. It's heavy, it doesn't zoom, you know. All of that goes into, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up in the next six months when I can afford it, hopefully, I'm gonna pick up a 100 to 400, the RF 1 to 400. I have reviewed that in the past. Uh, I've never owned it, but I've rented it and I've uh, used friends and stuff and that lens is amazing. And what I wanna do is have that on a backup body as my walk around while this is in the bag or in the car or whatever. And then I want to basically force myself to put myself in situations where I'm trying to get, get the most, the best image that I can or the best visuals that I can using this thing and then having the one to 400 as a backup and a walk around and a scouting camera and all of that. So that's kind of my mind frame. That's how I got this thing. That's all the stuff that I've been thinking about. And I just wasn't sure it was gonna happen until it finally showed up at my doorstep last week. And I was just tearing myself apart mentally, like worrying, did I do the wrong thing? Did I make a mistake? Should I get my gear back? Is this gonna cripple us? You know, what have I done? Am I not gonna be able to use it? Is it so much negativity? And I just had to let it all go. And then when I got it finally, and every day that I've been using it, and today, right now, you know, even hand holding this thing, 
I, all of my fears are gone. All of my worry is gone. I absolutely am loving this thing and I'm looking forward to using it more. And I can promise you two things. One is you're gonna see a lot more content with this. And the other thing is I'm kind of worried I was worried initially about like, I know a lot of people follow my channel for the wildlife stuff because I use gear that's relatable. You know, the one to 500 was high end, but still a lot of people have it. Uh, the one to 400, the 150s, the 600s, those kind of, I always use this budget gear and that made me kind of relatable. And I don't want people to think that I'm like a trader or that I'm like unrelatable or something anymore. I'm still gonna be doing, I'm still gonna be renting gear. I'm still gonna be using budget lenses. I'm still gonna be doing challenges and all of that. but. I want this for myself. I want to challenge myself and I want to show myself and you guys what I can do when I'm at my best with my best tools and not being lazy and all of those things. So that's kind of where I'm headed going forward. You know, I'm still, I'm going to get another backup body. I'm going to have the one to 400. I'm still going to do lots of videos with that kind of stuff, but I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to have this. I'm going to go out on serious uh, wildlife escapades. I'm watching more Osprey still, you know, that's, that's the direction that I want to go. So I'm going to wrap it up here because camera lady's getting tired. It's starting to rain. It's getting dark and we've got a little hiking to do over some sketchy cliffs that I don't want to hike in the rain. So let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you think about the images too. I think I got a couple of good ones so far. These images of the Townsend warblers that I got, uh, the other day, I've never gotten images of Townsend and Warblers like this before. I was so happy. They're one of my favorite Warblers of all time. And, oh, that was amazing. Uh, but anyways, if you guys have any questions, comments, you know, like what you think about life in general and, and all the photography things and, and if it's my, if I'm just crazy or if you can relate to any of this stuff. Future Brent here. So uh, I was editing the thing, the video, and I, I uh, realized that I forgot a couple of things. So real quick, I already told everybody about this uh, on the channel members. So if you guys are interested in supporting the channel a little further and getting some extra perks and stuff like that, then you should definitely check out the channel members. Uh, I really appreciate all the support. It, it makes a huge difference. Uh, but anyways, like I said, I, I let the channel members know um, what's going on, like a while ago, like over a week ago. And a bunch of them asked me the same question. So the question was why a 500 and not a 600 F4? And it's pretty simple really. Um, it comes down to three things, price, size, and weight. So the price of the 600 F4s used are still like in the 6,000 range. And like I said earlier in the video, I didn't actually spend any money uh, because I didn't have any money to spend on this. So, you know, that, I sold pretty much everything that I could really afford to lose, even though I sacrificed a lot already in that. And I, I basically, there's no way I could have come up with, maybe if I would have saved for an extra whatever, you know, extra six months or something, I probably could have done it. And then maybe got the 600 F4 Mark II, but then it still comes down to size and weight. So I do shoot a lot of birds and a 600 would be better for birds, but I also shoot a lot of other things like mammals and and things like that. So um, 500 is a good compromise there. I did pick up the teleconverter, the 1.4, like I mentioned earlier, and that's been great. It's been, I think even with the teleconverter, it's been as sharp or potentially even sharper than my 100 to 500. I've been very happy with the teleconverter uh, so far. I don't have the two times. I might pick that up. I've never considered it in the past, but I might pick it up because this lens is just so good. Uh, but then it comes down to size and weight. So the 500 is physically smaller and a lot lighter, like a pound and a half lighter than the Mark II version. If I can afford the RF 600 F F4, then yeah, I would go with that because it's like the same size as the 500. And it's even lighter because the, the weight distribution is better and everything, but I'll probably never be able to afford that. So it was definitely a compromise, but you know, having a, with the teleconverter, having a 700 F5.6 is still two thirds of a stop faster than my one to 500. And that, and not only that, but 200 millimeters longer, it's proven to be instrumental and amazing. And I'm, I'm just very happy with the overall setup. I showed you in the beginning that I can still fit this in my Shimoda. I will probably pick up a Shimoda Action X70 because they have a new ICU internal camera unit that uh, can accommodate a 600 F4 attached. So my 500 F4 attached should be able to accommodate that in the in the Action X70, 
no problem. But for now, I'm gonna keep rolling with the Action X50. I still got a lot of things to get. I still gotta get a lens coat. I still gotta get a gimbal, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Some sort of like black rapid strap or something. But I think that was it. And then the last thing is, if you wanna join a workshop, uh, check out, I've got Scotland coming up June, 2024, Seabirds, Puffins. Really looking forward to that one. I've also got my uh, Albuquerque, Northern New Mexico, Bosque del Apache, all that stuff, private workshops for birding. If you wanna come join me for one to three days is what I offer for the private workshops. Uh, and I'll take you around central and northern New Mexico for all of the best birding, including Bosque del Apache, Albuquerque. It's just absolutely phenomenal in the winter. It's my favorite thing ever. So if that sounds like something you wanna do and then you wanna try out this lens and uh, mess around and learn some things and get some great bird photos, then definitely check out the website and email me and let me know if and when you wanna sign up because I think my December is already filling up pretty quick but I'm offering them from November to February. All right, that's it. I'm gonna finish editing the video and then tea time and then back out for some more wildlife. So huge thanks for sticking around this far. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button for me. It's the best thing you can do for the channel and I'll see you in the next one.